invited our next speaker to our last convention in Philadelphia, but we had to settle for a video instead, if you remember. But this year, we're getting the real thing. As I have often said, it's never been more important for the four postal unions to work together. Solidarity and unity are essential when political forces are loose in America that want to privatize or want to dismantle the Postal Service. Mark Dimenstein, the president of the American Postal Workers Union, shares these beliefs. He and his union are indispensable allies and partners in the fight to preserve the Postal Service as a vital public institution. He was elected in 2013 and has taken the lead in organizing the Grand Alliance to Save Our Public Postal Service and the Coalition for Postal Banking that I discussed earlier. Thanks to his energy and his passion, the APWU successfully stopped the outsourcing of postal employee work to the Staples office supplies chain. A campaign which you'll remember we joined during our last convention when we picketed against Staples in Philadelphia. And he and his team have just won a new contract for APWU members after a long battle in interest arbitration. Mark and I, along with the leaders of the mail handlers and the rural carriers, we meet and we consult on a frequent basis to share information and to coordinate strategy. We are working together to push for sensible postal reform that strengthens the Postal Service without attacking our networks, our members, or the quality of the service that we provide to the American people. The postal unions are united, and Brother Dimenstein deserves a lot of credit for that. He not only fights for his members, believe me, he fights for you too. Nobody outside our union is more reliable when it comes to defending Saturday and door-to-door -door delivery. We, in turn, are dedicated to improving service standards and preserving the Postal Service's retail, transport, and processing networks. That's solidarity in action. I'm lucky to have Mark as a brother and as a friend, and we are all lucky to call the workers represented by APWU our brothers and sisters. So my fellow letter carriers, please welcome Mark Dimenstein, the president of the American Postal Workers Union. When the union's inspiration through the workers' blood shall run, there can be no power greater anywhere beneath the sun. Yet what force on earth is weaker than the feeble strength of one? For the union makes us strong. <laughs> Brother President Rolando, National Executive Board members of the NALC, and all the NALC sister and brother delegates with that opening stanza of labor's anthem, Solidarity Forever, I bring you greetings on behalf of the 200,000 members of the APW and a big salute to all you do in the frontline struggle to improve the lives of workers. We wish you a productive convention that strengthens the fighting capacity of the NALC and the working class in general in these most challenging times. And brothers and sisters, challenging they are. We are working, living, and struggling, struggling in a time where there is an all-out war on the workers, our families, our communities, our standards of living, our rights, 
and our unions. Make no mistake about it, it is them versus us, Wall Street versus Main Street, and capital versus labor. Our precious right to vote is under severe attack. In the post-Citizens United period, elections are openly and increasingly bought and sold. Corporate lobbyists and politicians revamp tax structure, shifting the burden from the wealthy to the working. And at our expense, government, government policies enrich the private medical industrial complex, putting big pharma profits over single-payer Medicare for all, and the profits of private military industrial complex with their endless wars for profit while our infrastructure collapses at home and our pensions disappear, and the private prison industrial complex with its incentive to jail rather than to educate. And by design, we are faced with a winner-take-all political system that perpetuates the lesser of two evil choices, largely answers to Wall Street rather than Main Street, and stacks the deck against the development of a needed union-based political party. In this rigged system, the Wall Street crooks are doing just fine, bailed out from the economic crisis they caused, leaving the 99% of us in, the, in their wake of layoffs underemployment, home foreclosures, wage freezes, austerity, declining standards of living, and obscene wealth inequality. One half of 1% of the U.S. population has the combined wealth of the bottom 90%. And CEOs of fast food chains average $9,000, guess what? Not a month, not a week, not a day, $9,000 an hour while resisting workers' demands for a beginning of a living wage of $15 an hour. The federal minimum wage remains, through both Republican and Democratic administrations alike, at a criminal $7.25 an hour. It should be little wonder, then, that the Bernie Sanders anti-Wall Street, pro-worker, pro-people campaign surprised all the pundits and pollsters and took the country by storm. Folks are saying enough is enough. It's time to take our country back from the Wall Street billionaires. It is time for a political revolution, sisters and brothers. Where we work and proudly serve in the public sector, you all know the public good and services are being undermined and public sector workers demonized by corporate powers. Entities that stand for the public good, public libraries, parks, hospitals, education, utilities, transportation, and yes, our public postal services are under extreme attack aimed at privatization. To understand efforts at postal privatization, just follow the money and the $68 billion or so of annual revenue that the corporate behemoths like UPS and Pitney Bowes wants their greedy hands on. But since the people trust the post office and trust all of you, outright privatization is not so easy. Instead, privatizers have to degrade and undermine postal services as a means to their end. Keep the lines long, hours short, delay mail, deliver late into the night. This is the aim of the recent bipartisan rollback of the exigency postal rate hike and of the bipartisan 2006 PAEA, which created the congressionally manufactured financial crisis being used to choke the postal service today. Sisters and brothers, you're here helping to build collective solutions for a better life, a better country, and a better world. Joining hands, linking arms in collective struggle and solidarity. An injustice anywhere is an injustice everywhere, from the streets of Ferguson and Flint to the workroom floor. Solidarity is not an option we have, but rather the key to rebuilding our labor movement, a movement on the defensive at the lowest unionization rate in 100 years. So your convention theme for the way forward, solidarity in action, 
is a great theme, and it's right on the money. Our building of a working alliance with the four postal unions, that's solidarity in action. I always believe, and still do, that we'll be stronger as one union. But short of that, maximum joint work around our common cause is vital. And Brother Rolando, I want to say in front of all your good brothers and sisters here, how much I appreciate and value your cooperation, your friendship, and the fraternal relationship that we have forged over the last three years. When, when Brother Rolando sat at the table with us, along with AFL-CIO President Rich Trumpka and actor-activist Danny Glover on the opening day of our negotiations with the United States Postal Service, that, sisters and brothers, is solidarity in action. Building the Grand Alliance to save our public postal service, now 140 organizations, 80 national organizations, including groups like the National Council of Churches and Willie Nelson's Farm Aid, that is solidarity in action. The Grand Alliance just completed five regional field hearings, including one in my hometown, Greensboro, North Carolina, which was led by your long-term NALC activist, leader, and my great friend and mentor, by the way, Richard Kortz, who's somewhere in this room as a delegate. That is solidarity in action with the postal patrons who keep their public post, who to keep their public postal service will have to fight for it and defend it. Unlike the previous APW president, I view, in fact, I insist that the protection of six-day delivery is indeed the fight of the American Postal Workers Union. That is solidarity in action, sisters and brothers. But as Brother Rolando just said in his um, wonderful introduction, the reciprocal support is just as vital. And we appreciate the NLC and all of you in joining, which is still an ongoing boycott against Staples. We stopped a lot of it, but not all of it. As we fight the dirty deal of the United States Postal Service and Staples to privatize retail operations by putting them into the Staples stores. And we appreciate the NALC standing up for overnight service standards. That, sisters and brothers, is solidarity in action. When we fight together for expanded and vibrant public postal services, such as with the campaign for postal banking, regardless of which craft does the work, that, sisters and brothers, is solidarity in action. When the postal unions cooperate to reach common ground on postal reform and advocate for decent nominees to the PRC and the Board of Governors, solidarity in action. Joining the Verizon picket lines, solidarity in action. When APW was asked by Senator Sanders to draft the postal plank language that was then essentially adopted by the Democratic Party platform, I ensured the protection of six-day and door-to-door -door delivery was included. Solidarity in action, sisters and brothers. And different, different than in 2010, this APW leadership refused to engage in another round of concessionary bargaining. As such, we were holding the line for all postal unions. Solidarity in action, sisters and brothers. And we hope, we hope that our success in our two-year battle for a decent contract, we call it good service, good jobs, good contract, will help the NLC in your ongoing and just struggle for a decent contract as well. When our forefathers and mothers stormed the heavens in the unlawful 1970 Great Postal Strike and built the foundation for decent career postal jobs, sisters and brothers, solidarity in action. And when every union, when every union in this country stood united against fast-track trade authority and rotten trade deals like the Trans-Pacific Partnership, TPP, that enriched multinationals at the expense of workers everywhere, solidarity in action. We do have, we do have a long and rocky road ahead of us, brothers and sisters. 
but solidarity in action points the way forward. The rebellion of the workers of Wisconsin showed that we are ready and willing to stand up and fight back. The Chicago teachers, a few years back, formed their union forged a mighty alliance with the parents and the community and prevailed. Fast food workers are escalating the fight for living wage and making real gains. The Occupy Wall Street movement burst forth against Wall Street greed. The Sanders campaign encouraged us to think bold, fight bold, that we do deserve better. And union members of the United Auto Workers, our sisters and brothers, stood tall and largely ended the divisive two-tier wage structure at the big three in their last round of collective bargaining. The Verizon workers chart a militant way forward to victory. A revitalized labor movement is indeed possible, and it is indeed necessary. Yes, we do have powerful and organized adversaries. But guess what, sisters and brothers? Are there more of us than them? A whole lot in this room, too. Far more of us than them. When we learn to better unite and fight, dismiss and defeat the divide and conquer schemes of corporate America, dividing white from black, native born from immigrant, private from public sector, active from retired, career from non-career, postal craft from postal craft, workers at home from workers abroad, well, we will realize our power, and we can and we will win. From our workplaces to the streets, from our neighborhoods to the halls of Congress. It is time to ever more seriously educate, organize, mobilize, and galvanize. We will not be able to solely elect, litigate, hope, or grieve our way out of these difficult and dangerous times. We will have to fight our way out, fight our way out with a movement of millions. We must continue to organize a crusade to save the public postal service. We must continue to organize a crusade to save our unions. We must be part of a crusade for economic and social justice. Let's build our power, continue to stand up and fight back, hand in hand with each other, all postal unions, all labor, the public, and our many community allies. And the words of one of the most well-known songs of struggle and freedom, commonly referred to as the African American anthem, lift every voice and sing, brothers and sisters, let us march on till victory is won. Solidarity forever. Thank you, Brother Demonstein. I look very forward to addressing your members at your convention we look forward next to week. Having... Do I have to wear a suit? Do I have to, I have to, wear, I have to wear a suit? To that? Okay. You have to wear a suit and give me your introduction of me so I know what to say All when right. you come. We got it. We got it. Right. But you wrote my introduction of you. <laughs> How about a letter carrier chair for Brother Mark? Hip, hip! Hooray! Hip, hip! Hooray! Hip, hip!